And, and also, I, I had focused a little bit on the role of the United Nations in all of this. Uh, you know, people think that it's, it's silly that the UN would be involved in education, and it sounds silly, but it's, uh, it's actually going on, and it's been going on for a long time. And so that's kind of what I brought to the table, looking at, uh, you know, what's going on now and where this is all going in the future if people don't wake up and, uh, and put a stop to it. And so, you know, the combination of all of Sam's encyclopedic knowledge of uh, what's been going on in education for the last hundred years and even before with all of the research I had been doing on, you know, current events and, and projecting the lines out toward the future. I think uh, we made a, a good team here to cover this subject in depth, uh, looking at, you know, the full spectrum of things that need to be examined. Now we'll get into the history of uh, all of this a bit later and talk about, uh, uh, you know, of course, where this is going, but let me ask you, why is the UN involved uh, at all? I mean, and, and how long have they been, uh, part of the, uh, the uh, well, I guess we could divide it up, the, we, specifically the American educational system, of course, but UN is a global, uh, you know, organ, if you will, and they, they have their fingers in all the different pies of the different nations out there. But let's focus on America for a bit. When did they get involved? Uh, you know, the UNESCO, it was founded uh, in the 50s. Uh, the UNESCO is the UN Agency for uh, Education, Science and Culture, the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. And right from the get go, uh, it was very clear <clears throat> what this institution was designed to do. I mean, and back then they were actually even less shy about promoting their wacky ideas than they are today, although it's still pretty out in the open for anyone who cares to look. But, uh, you know, right from the very beginning, they put Julian Huxley in charge. And, uh, and he identified the mission of UNESCO. We're, we need to build a culture uh, through education that will allow us to have a global government, a global uh, culture based on humanism. Uh, that, uh, you know, is going to supposed to lead us to this uh, new world of peace and prosperity and happiness and understanding and all these kinds of wonderful things. Uh, so that's the vision that they set out to implement. Now, there's been some uh, speed bumps on the road. You know, they, they bureaucrats at the UNESCO have been very, very busy for decades trying to impose um, global education standards and these types of things and try to influence education at the national level. Uh, lately, they've been extremely successful, but they've had some speed bumps. Uh, Ronald Reagan, for example, said, you know what, we're not going to participate in this lunacy. We withdrew from UNESCO. He said it was uh, anti-American and anti-freedom. And so we withdrew for a while and we stopped sending them money. But, uh, you know, as it, as it goes with government programs, they never really disappear. And eventually we rejoined uh, UNESCO. And there's some, you know, extremely alarming things that they've been involved in, uh, even going back decades. And I'll cite one example, uh, the World Core Curriculum. Uh, now, probably 99.9% .9 of the planet would be very surprised to learn that UNESCO has a world core curriculum for your children. Uh, and I was pretty surprised when I found out about it, too. Uh, you know, since when does the United Nations decide what, what our children need to learn? Uh, you know, people in Sweden might be more used to this idea, more familiar <laughs> with the idea. Yeah, yeah. In, at least in the United States, the notion that, uh, you know, unaccountable international bureaucrats led by a Communist Party operative, currently the, the woman in charge of UNESCO right now, uh, that's a crazy idea. Why would we have that? But uh, they did develop this world core curriculum, and it's worth taking a look at. Uh, I mean, Bill Gates, for example, the financier of Common Core here in the United States, he put more than $2 billion into Common Core. Uh, Ten years ago, he signed a deal with UNESCO to develop a master curriculum and all kinds of educational technology programs to basically get the whole world on the same page, like Julian Huxley was advocating, to create this global uh, humanist culture. So Robert Mueller, he was the uh, Under Secretary General of the United Nations uh, for quite a while. He died uh, a few years ago, but he's the one who really uh, drafted the World Core Curriculum. Now, looking at Mueller's background, I think should also offer people uh, some insight into what he was working on, and also, uh, you know, it should ring alarm bells. It's just to give uh, you know a few examples, uh, he considered himself a disciple of Alice Bailey. Uh, you know, Alice Bailey is not especially well known today, but she should be. Her role on history has been uh, very large. She, uh, among other things, she founded the Lucifer Publishing Company. Uh, this was kind of a UN promoting apparatus. And uh, it, it, this might all sound ridiculous, but it's very easy to verify. She wrote a number of books. Uh, she claimed that she didn't really write the book. She said that she was allowing uh, these ascended masters to, uh, to possess her and that they were writing through her. One in particular, she called him the Tibetan. Uh, would, um, you know, supposedly possess her and then do these writings. And then she put them in, in book form. She had uh, externalization of the hierarchy, uh, education, and the new age. 
So, uh, you know, a lot of these new agey people have been very involved with the United Nations and with the uh, global education movement. And it's kind of all coming to a head now where you have the United Nations and the UNESCO openly bragging. They just put out a report uh, last week, I believe, celebrating how far they had come in uh, their Education for All initiative. Now, what is the Education for All initiative? Uh, it's got a pretty long uh, background to it. But in 1990, governments and dictators around the world came together and they decided, hey, we need uh, you know education for all, they called it. And who could be opposed to education for all? But uh, one of the things I did for the book was I looked through all of these you know, seemingly boring UN agreements and documents and treaties and statements and this kind of stuff. And when you read through the bureaucraties, um, you know, it's just shocking the, the stuff that they have in there. So under the guise of educating everybody, they're talking about uh, mandatory uh, changes in attitudes and values and beliefs. And, uh, you know, they, they phrase it all in language that sounds very nice. Like we need uh, gender equality. And so to achieve gender equality, we're going to have to, uh, you know, change everybody's values using the education system. But, um, you know, regardless of what you think about uh, gender equality, first of all, that's not really what they're talking about here. This is part of a much more sinister agenda. When they say gender equality, they don't mean what you and I think, you know, that men and women ought to have uh, maybe equal rights and uh, these types of things. They're talking about something much broader, uh, and they've been clear about that. So, um, you know, then they, uh, 10 years later, they got together in 2000, and they signed another one of these uh, global education documents, and they laid out 15 planks for where they wanted to go with global education. And they decided, you know what, uh, all humans require certain knowledge. And that knowledge, of course, is going to be decided by UNESCO. And they decided, okay, well, if all this knowledge is going to be required of every human to enter this new uh, wonderful age of peace that we're going into under the United Nations, uh, then we're going to need some very serious educational initiatives. So one of the things that we're promoting, to give you an idea, is national standards. Every country needs to have national education standards. Uh, so that they can all, and all these national education standards, of course, need to be aligned with uh, the international standards that the UNESCO is pushing. And then to monitor compliance with these national standards, we need to have uh, national testing programs that are aligned with the national standards. So for Americans, that probably sounds very familiar at this point. We have national standards under the guise of this common core. I, I call it Commie Core or Obama. Yeah. <laughs> um, we've got the federally funded testing regime in place. And uh, UNESCO just put out a report saying how great, you know, we went from basically no countries with national education standards to something like 100 countries with national education standards. So we're making great progress. Uh, we need to do more, of course, uh, you know, the UNESCO thinks. But, uh, hey, this is really great progress in implementing our 15-point uh, agenda to radically reform education around the world. And, and that's where we are today. I mean, the, the UNESCO is uh, pushing pornographic sex education in all of our schools. Uh, and all around the world. I mean, they, they put out reports literally saying that the kids, you know, from zero to five need to be introduced to uh, masturbation and homosexuality and homosexual marriages. And then when they get a little bit older, they can learn about, uh, you know, things that are too pornographic for me to even discuss on a, on a radio program. Yep. But uh, that's the kind of stuff they're pushing on our students. Yep, you're, you're right. And uh, I wanted to ask you, there's a lot of points of what you brought up there. We can examine it more in depth here, but you talked about the world core curriculum. I, I didn't know about this either. And uh, it's it, do or does UNESCO pretend to be um, politically impartial? Because just as you explained, most of the people seem to have a foot in, in either socialist parties or flat out the communist party. I think uh, Irina Bokova, who is the current head, I think she is uh, uh, she was part of the communist party from 1990. And then they rebranded, of course, to the socialist party after that point in uh, Bulgaria. And she is also the daughter of uh, Georgi Bokov, who was the uh, uh, editor of chief in the um, in the official newspaper of the Bulgarian Communist Party. So um, that seems that they're not kind of impartial when it comes to the political aspect here. Uh, you're exactly right, Henrik. And you know you, what you said about the head of UNESCO right now, this Irina character is right on the money. And uh, you know the whole entire organization is dominated by these types of characters. If you look at who chaired their most recent general meeting. Uh, where they bring all the kind of governments and dictators together to have this big meeting. It was a Chinese communist, an operative from mainland China, uh, you know, loyal to Beijing, obviously. So you have these uh, international organizations run by actual communists. You know, it's not just the Red Scare and Fear Monger. These are actual communists with documented communist backgrounds 
or actively serving Communist Party run dictatorships uh, yep. who are running this UN education agency. And the whole time they're pretending like this is all just, you know, neutral, philosophically neutral, religiously neutral, just knowledge that all humans need to have. But if you examine this uh, so-called neutral and uh, content neutral and value neutral knowledge, what you'll find is that it's anything but that. And, you know, Swedish people are probably, uh, at least the ones who listen to your show, are probably very familiar with this kind of stuff. The government there uh, pretends like they have a philosophically and religiously neutral curriculum. <laughs> uh, that is absolutely untrue. Yeah. Um, they, you know, just saying that is a, is a value statement in and of itself that somebody could be objective in those areas. But this is happening at the global level. It's you know, it's no accident. It's all by design. And uh, they tell you openly that the goal is to change the values and the attitudes and the beliefs and the behavior of um, you know all of humanity using the education system. Now, do you think that they have an agenda to, I don't know, fulfill the dictates of, let's say, uh, uh, socialist internet or communist international or something like that to, to try to create, create this kind of, uh, you know, global, you know, communist state? It's not, it's not far-fetched for us to go there, I think, uh, when we consider the people involved, right? Uh, you're absolutely right, Henrik. And one of the things that I think is most astounding is that they talk about all this stuff openly. Uh, we don't need to engage in any theorizing to say that this is their agenda because they've told us this is their agenda. Going back to Julian Huxley, the first uh, head of the UNESCO, he told us what he was doing. He wanted a world government, a world culture based on humanist philosophy. Um, and, uh, you know, that's what they're moving towards. So we don't have to speculate. They tell us they're building a new world order. They tell us what this new world order is going to look like. We can see that it's dominated by communists and totalitarians and utopians and self-described progressives. Um, so, you know, there, there's no need to, to theorize here at all. It's all out in the open. And that's one of the things that we do in the book is just get together all the primary source documents. They're available on the UN's webpage. They're not hiding this in any sense. The, the thing is, the media is not reporting it. So people get shocked when they hear this and they say that couldn't possibly be true. So we spent a lot of time on the bibliography making sure that, first of all, we're using primary source documents. It's coming straight from the horse's mouth. If you want to argue, argue with the UN, because they're the ones who put the documents out saying these things. Um, and, and secondly, we, would, we just wanted to make sure that, you know, it's not us saying this. This is them saying this and us telling you that they're saying it. So, you know, if you want to be mad at somebody, be mad at the media for not connecting <laughs> the dots and not reporting on these things. Yeah, exactly. Now, so they're targeting the, uh, the the children or the education system, I guess, because they want to get to the, the children. They want to try to attain control uh, over them, their, their reference frame for uh, reality. As we've seen in Sweden as an exemplary country in this uh, department, banning homeschooling, saying, you know, we don't want the, the, uh, the bias of the parents to be imposed on the children. So it's better to leave it to the professionals. Let us take care of that, right? So, but... Um, Let's speak more about how they're seeking to transform the education system. They're already doing that. I get that. But, and then we can extend it to the, the why, what, why they're doing this. Is this simply for gaining control politically or is there other reasons behind this, do you think? Um, you know, it, I think most of the players in here have their, you know, their own unique motivations. Like one thing that you notice here with the Common Core, for example, is that you have the big business community supporting this. And you would think, uh, you know, big business would not want a bunch of dumbed down workers. You know, who's who's going to engineer the products of the future? Who's going to solve the problems of the future? Uh, so you would think that big business would not be supportive of this. But in fact, they are. If you look at all the big business associations here in the United States, the Chamber of uh, Commerce, the U.S. Business Roundtable, they're all fully in favor of this common core standards. So, uh, you know, and Bill Gates, why would Bill Gates want something like this? Well, one thing we can look at is, uh, you know, what he does. He, he put $2 billion into Common Core uh, to develop it, to promote it, to buy off the think tanks, to, you know, bribe legislators and governments to impose it. Uh, yet when you look at where he sends his kid, uh, it, they, they go to a nice private school where Common Core is absolutely forbidden. So if it was such a great idea, if Bill Gates really was just this wonderful philanthropist who wants the best for your children, uh, you would think that he might send his own kid to someplace where, uh, they use the common core that he paid to develop, but he doesn't. And, yeah. um, you know, the methodology behind this, um, 